Jesus have never heard argument, uh, you know, from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And uh, the people who are walking at home with you, you will not hear any argument between husband and wife. And your children will not hear any argument between father and mother in Jesus' name. Amen. Sanctified, sanctified, sanctified. And the Lord has given us a pattern. Number two now, the picture of the unity of the sanctified in fellowship. The unity of the sanctified in fellowship. He sanctifies us. He purifies us. And then we remain in a fellowship. What's the picture? We're coming back to John chapter 2. 17 john chapter 17 and i'm reading from verse 20 it says neither pray i for this alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word and so now we have believed on the lord jesus christ and is praying for sanctification and we experience that sanctification what happens then in fellowship between the apostles and the disciples of the past and the leaders and the pastors and the members of the church today look at verse 21 that they all how many of us I said how many of us you know there was no tribalism no and there was no nepotism no and there was no uh, preferences like you know partiality no because it says that they all may be one they all may be one it is not like well yes i'm a i'm a believer i'm even sanctified but that person is from my tribe i'm sanctified but that person is from my local government i'm sanctified but that person will speak the same dialect together and so now that we're in deeper life together, I'm going to, you know, favor him with position, favor him with contract, favor him with nothing like that, nothing like that. Because the Lord Jesus Christ has given us a pattern with the Father. And we now have the picture, and we follow that picture, the picture of the unity of, of the sanctified in fellowship. And it says, and that they all may be one, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be, tell me, one, even as we are one, even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me. And it says that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. And look at the picture now, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 32. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 32. Those early believers, see how they did it and see how they brought out the picture and see how they followed the pattern see how the lord helps them it says in acts of the apostle chapter 4 and verse 32 and the multitude of them that believed were tell me of one heart and what of one soul no argument among them no argument among us no disagreement among us no conflict among us. Uh, some people are not saying amen. amen. Anybody wanting to fight another believer there? No, never. And it says the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the, praise the Lord. That love will reign in our midst. Yeah. That unity will reign in our midst. Yeah. And that picture of unity of the sanctified in fellowship, we will see in every local church and in the whole church in Jesus' name. Yeah. What I have belongs to you. What you have belongs to me. And everything we have in common. And nobody will lack or be in need in Jesus' name. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Reading from verse 10. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all, how many of us? 
I said that many people that she all speak the same thing, the sanctification, and then that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Make it practical. Let's say, for example, husband and wife, and they are born again, and they are sanctified, and here you find it says that they are to speak the same thing. Not that this one is going to her parents and say something, and this the other one is going to his own parents and say another thing. And you cannot find unity. You cannot find togetherness. The same thing with the members and the leaders. Uh, something is happening, and then we need to take a decision. This one is Say no, this must be this way. The other person said, But look at this, look at this point, consider this. It must no, I must have my own way. And this one is going this direction, that one is going that direction. Is there sanctification there? Want to take a simple decision, and then we'll say, Now we'll come together. Here are the facts of the matter that we are taking, and the facts of the matter demand, and these are the things that are available to distribute all over this. And this one said, Well, it looks like this is the way to do it. The other one said, I disagree. I disagree. I must tell you my mind. I don't want to pretend because uh, you know I know you want us to say just yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, ma, yes, sir, yes, mama, and whatever. I'm not going to do that. And then this, and they will spend one hour. Something we could have settled in five minutes. Is there sanctification there? No, certification is on paper. Certification is in the booklet of the Congress, but when it comes to the heart, it comes to the life, it comes into a relationship together, interaction together, certification must be in our lives. I see it in your life. I pray you will see it in my life. And we will all live the sanctified life together in Jesus' name. If we have made mistakes and, you know, we have argued and we have opposed each other and whatever, all that is buried here tonight. Uh, look at verse 10 again. Verse 10 again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that she all speak the same thing from tonight it will happen. And that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment look at Ephesians Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 I'm reading here from verse 3 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace that word endeavoring means doing your best everything you have to do you know the other brother is there he is not she is very quiet and is meek give him chance to talk there's something inside you that wants to okay since he's never talking and she is never going to talk and i have an idea i always have an idea and then i bring it out and then i overshadow everybody and compel everybody follow my way and the other people are just being gentle and they are being simple and uh, so it's okay the meeting is over what i've said is what you're going to do why don't you give chance to the other people endeavor to control that thing inside you that wants always to take the upper hand, wants to control the other person, wants to beat down the other person. It says you endeavor, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You know it will happen from tonight? Look at Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent I may hear of your fears that you stand fast in one spirit one spirit and with one mind I said one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel I look at chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 1 Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 if there be therefore any consolation in Christ if any comfort of love if any fellowship of the spirit if any powers of mercies fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded ye be like-minded brother well if we're sanctified we should be like-minded and not that well i beg to differ i beg to be different 
I don't have that background that you people have. I don't have that idea that you people have. I'm telling you, this is the way I was brought up. And I like to stand like this. Let that eye within you be crossed and cancelled. So that it says you fulfill the joy of the Lord and will be like-minded. Look up here. When you have yam, this yam here, this yam there, this yam there, of different sizes. And then you boil the yam. And you want to prepare pounded yam. You like it? And then you put it inside and you pound everything together. When everything comes out and you put it in the plate, do you know which one is from that farm? Yoruba farm, Igbo farm, Aousa farm, Efik farm. Everything is together. That's the way we ought to be. All those distinctions, all those rough edges, put them inside the mortar and pound them. And that thing will be delicious to Christ. If we're going to prepare any delicious meal for Christ, all these things that are different, I'm different, and you are different, everything has to go away, and we match everything together. Look at that again in verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife of vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others let this mind be you which was also in christ jesus it will happen Amen. in your heart it will happen Amen. in my heart it will happen Amen. In our heart will be united together. Number one, the pattern. Number two, the picture. Number three, the power. The power of the unity of saints for fruitfulness. The power of the unity of saints for fruitfulness. We're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And we're reading from verse 21. John chapter 17, verse 21. This is the last part of verse 21, the last part, the last line, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That's the purpose. That's the power. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, in the middle part, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. That's what sanctification does. When you are sanctified, I'm sanctified, and then we're united together, we have one accord, and we're serving the Lord together. It says the power of that unity will bring a fruitfulness. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 14 Matthew chapter 5 reading from verse 14 it says ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house look at verse 20 verse 16 now let your light so shine let your light shine when you are saved now you are sanctified now you have a deeper experience in the Lord let your light Light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When we have this experience, we'll take the gospel to the world and the people of the world, they'll accept, they'll believe, and they'll turn to the Lord. We're looking at Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Mark chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 15 it says in verse 15 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature you are saved take the gospel to the world now you are sanctified take the gospel to the world and be excited about it be happy about it and then do it with real passion so that by the grace of God this gospel will reach the world through you it will reach the world through me it will reach the world 
and through us together united what you cannot do i will do what i cannot do you will do and then we'll cooperate together coordinate our works together we're going to reach many in jesus name it tells us in second corinthians chapter five second corinthians chapter five i'm reading from verse 19 second corinthians chapter five verse 19 to which that is to say that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Reconciling the world unto himself. How is he going to reconcile the world unto himself? By sanctified witnesses, by sanctified soul winners, by sanctified members of the church, by sanctified a bride of the Lamb. It says reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us are you a part of this has committed unto us the word of reconciliation the sanctification as we have seen from the word of god is uh, it gives us unity what kind of unity number one purifying unity now that we are united together and we're doing some defiling dirty foolish things no purifying unity number two is a pleasant kind of unity pleasant unity it pleases the father it pleases heaven and it is pleasant and peaceful number three prevent Failing unity. Whatever we're discussing and whatever we're trying to take a decision, a conclusion on, as you give preference to the other person in honor preferring the other, unity will prevail in our midst. Number one, I said, is prevailing unity. Number two, is a pleasant unity. Number three, is prevailing unity. Number four, peaceful unity. Outsiders will not come and settle quarrel for us. I said that the landlord will not be settling quarrels for our members. Yeah. Look at deeper life member. Look at another deeper life member. And they're living in the same place. And then the landlord will say, ah, you say you are deeper life and you are fighting like this. You can't choose the same kitchen together. You can't choose the same bathroom together. What's the matter with you? I don't go to deeper life, but you know, I hear of deeper life that they teach holiness there. Is this the holiness they're teaching you there? That will not happen again. Yeah peaceful unity then productive unity a kind of a unity that will bear fruit your local church will grow yeah. i said your local church will grow yeah. because you see as the local pastor there is preaching and the singers are singing and the other workers are also contributing their own part and everybody they're encouraging the newcomers and they're witnessing everybody so the past local pastor saying yes we're going to go this way everybody saying yes we're going to go when that unity is there, it will be productive unity. Then it will be profitable unity. Profitable unity. It's not a kind of a unity that will say, what is the result? And where is the goal? What the words unity, unity, unity. Where is the product? It's going to be a profitable unity. It's a persevering unity. No matter the storm, no matter the whatever is happening, we will persevere in that unity. That brother was uh, with our church before. What happens? Well, you know, there was a kind of a problem. And then he went away. And it's good. Let him go. Let him go. Because uh, really, when he was here, well, all the time, again, and all that, that's not persevering unity. Somebody will run after him. Somebody will run after her. And then we'll bring her back. Okay, we're sorry. We didn't listen to you. We're sorry. We went astray this way. Forgive us. And then we forgive you. And our unity will be persevering in Jesus name it's a permanent unity not temporary unity it's a unity that is there and it is permanent we saw it last week we're seeing it this week again and then I see it now when I come back to you again I'll see that uh, permanent unity in your life in Jesus name your family will not scatter your wife will not leave you your husband will not leave you if there's anything we have not set up before tonight, when you get back home, don't do it in the open. Don't wash your dirty clothes in the open. Don't uh, spread them there. Don't let us know anything. All I know is that you and your wife, you are united. 
All I know is that you and your husband, you are united. And whatever little roughages we need to straighten out, you know, or you go back home in the private and say, I listened today and I heard what, uh, you know, what teaching the word of God. I'm sorry for this. That other one will say, I was also thinking about you. I'm sorry. And then we're going to have persuasive unity. Persuasive unity. And that unity will be permanent in our fellowship, in our families, in Jesus' name. We we'll come to point number two now is the purpose and the usefulness of sanctified believers. The purpose and the usefulness of sanctified believers. You are going to be useful. I'm coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 23 and verse 24. John chapter 17, verse 23. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Look at that. Look at the kind of unity Jesus was praying for. And he it said there's a purpose for that, a purpose for this kind of unity that they'll be very perfect in one. Not only that, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and that the world will know that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, Father, it says in verse uh, in verse 24, I will that they also whom thou hast given me will be will be with me, you'll be with the Lord. Where I am, that they may Behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou loved me before the foundation of the world. Uh, we look at uh, John chapter 14, uh, reading from verse 10. John chapter 14, uh, we're reading from verse 10. In John chapter 14, verse 10, it says, Believest thou? that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. He was uh, trying telling the disciples, he said, look at this unity, and look at what I've been doing. It's because I've been united with the Father. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. It's a purposeful unity with the Father, that the work he was given to do, it was done well, it was done credit it was done profitably. Look at verse 23 of that same chapter. It's that's chapter 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and the Father will love him, and we, the Father and the Son, we, the Father and the Son Christ, and the Almighty God, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. If there's no disagreeable spirit inside you, if there's no conflict inside you, he said, myself and my father, the father and the son will come into you and make our abode with you. The Almighty will live inside you. His power will live inside you. I about I about the Holy Ghost. Look at uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 8 verse 11. It says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Already Jesus said, the Father will dwell in you. And then Jesus the Son will dwell in you. Here comes now the third personality of the Trinity. And it says, the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you that he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by spirit that dwelleth in you I pray it will happen look at first John first John chapter 4 first John chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 12 he lives inside us he abides inside us we're looking at first John chapter 4 verse 12 it says no man has seen God at any time if ye love one another God dwelleth in us if you love one another God dwelleth in us. 
look up here you know if uh, for example now there is a smoke although there's no real fire that is going to burn anything down but smoke comes into the whole building it's difficult to breathe and because of that if you find a way to go out you want to go out and go and take some fresh air the same thing when some of these things like anger like bitterness is inside anybody that a smoke and God will not like to stay inside that heart or the smoke and if you want God to stay with you you want him to abide with you and you want the father the son and the Holy Ghost to be united abiding with you forever all the smoke of anger all the smoke of bitterness all the smoke of uh, strife all the smoke of anxiety or whatever everything will clear away and then the father will abide inside you the son will abide inside you and the holy ghost will abide inside you in jesus name look at that verse 12 again verse 12 no man has seen god at any time if he love one another god dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us look at verse 13 hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit you'll experience that Amen. verse 16 look at verse 16 and it says and we have known and believed the love that god has to us god is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in god and god in him you see what sanctification does sanctification means unity and oneness because it cleanses the heart you see if we're not united there's something happening it's like you know when you are driving your car you have not put the oil where you need to put the oil and there's a lot of friction and you are hearing some sound there some sound there and uh, you know you try to press the brake the brake is you know hanging somewhere and nothing is working you know is because of the lack of the oil where the oil should be and when there is friction like in the midst of the people of God and the unity well to feel is not there this one is avoiding that that one is throwing away from that that one is not going to say his mind that one is uh, you know suspicious the other one is going to say if you talk now I don't know what they are going to do I want to you know stay in my place I want to know my level I want to know my you know little corner I don't want anybody to trouble me and I will not trouble anybody but there's something in the heart all that the Lord will cleanse away yeah. and all the friction the Lord will cleanse away in Jesus name yeah. in the heart where there's no sanctification is because there's Satan's pride and Satan's nature Satan said I will I will exalt my throne above the throne of God I will exalt myself above the stars I will control everything and that's why he was driven away from heaven where there's satanic pride Pride and satanic nature you will not find unity there what is self-exaltation self-exaltation he always wants to be above everyone know your level know your the place know the time you came I've been here since uh, you know when they started this uh, church before they made uh, this building I was here where were you so go and sit down when there is an uh, exaltation like that that we're exalting one we're exalting ourselves there will not be any unity but all that will be cancelled when a sinful criticism nobody ever does anything right only what he does that's the thing that is right when there's sinful criticism there cannot be unity when there's negative attitude you know the fellow is just angry at every you have not even done anything wrong and you have not said anything wrong but the fellow has a negative attitude a judgmental spirit is always belittling other people putting down other people and cutting down other people they are not be unity there and that's because there's no sanctification but when there's sanctification sanctification produces love somebody say amen, amen. and true love the true love of God is transparent love there's no pretense there's no hanky panky and there's no hypocrisy at all it's transparent love for others is total love for everyone and such a love will result in number one consecration consecration because I want the progress of the church I want the progress of the body of Christ and I love the church so much anything I have which will be of benefit to the church I lay down the love will 
bring in consecration. Number two, it will bring compassion. You see, when I love you, I have compassion on you. You are suffering, you are sick, or you are poor, you cannot pay your house rent. If I have some extra in my pocket, I will not just be holding it there. There will be compassion. There will be cooperation. Cooperation. When there is sanctification and there is love, we will cooperate with each other. We will say, yes, it's our father's work. It's our father's work. And God is going to be glorified. You cooperate with me. I cooperate with you. There's no agenda. There's no private agenda anywhere. It is the work of our Father, and there will be cooperation. Where there is love, the love we're talking about, there'll be conciliation. Conciliation. It will not be difficult to say, my brother, I, I didn't know you were there. I just passed. I didn't say hello. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, don't worry about that. I knew you were, you know, going somewhere. You see, there'll be conciliation. It will not be like, you know, and he passed me here. He didn't see me here. All right. When he comes, when he's passing by again, I'll pay him back in his own coin. And then if he greets me, oh, good afternoon, brother. Hmm. <laughs> you saw me here now? Did you see me when you passed? What's the matter? I was fighting. Yeah, I was fighting. Why didn't you greet me at that time? Conciliation. When there is sanctification, somebody give me a good amen. amen. There will be condescension. Condescension. You know, you will lower yourself for the other person. If you are tall, you don't want us to be, you know, looking up there, looking up there. You are bend down so we can look at each other face to face. There will be condescension. There will be compliance. Compliance. You will comply. We said, we're going to go this way. You comply. We're going to do that. We comply because there's sanctification. And then there will be clear, cleansed, and concerned conscience. In a place where there's sanctification, number one, there's no conflict. No conflict. There's sanctification, there's no conflict. Number two, there's no contradiction. Contradiction. There are some people, they just like to contradict. Somebody says something, who is that? Go and sit down. Are you not a woman? Don't talk again. When we men talk, women say, yes, sir. You know, but there's contradiction. But when there's sanctification, all that is over. I didn't hear my church. And then there is no contention. Pulling something, dragging something, pushing something, pulling it down. There is no conflict, number one. There's no contradiction, number two. There's no contention, number three. There is no corruption, no contamination. When there's sanctification, there's nothing inside me that will contaminate you. When there is sanctification, there's nothing inside you that will corrupt another person. There's no corruption. There's no conspiracy. When there is, uh, you know, sanctification, well, plan this behind him. Well, bring him down. That man will bring him. He looks happy. He looks uh, joyful. And he looks on top of the world. But we will show him he cannot remain as happy as that. There's no conspiracy when there is, uh, when there's sanctification, there's no content. Content belittling other people, looking down on them. What does he know? Where's he coming from? What's he going to do? What's he trying to bring out? There'll be no contempt. There'll be no carnality. No carnality. When there's sanctification, all those things, they're purged away. Sanctification brings maximum usefulness. And you will be useful. And I will be useful. And we shall be useful together. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 46. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. That's sanctification. One accord. One accord. They continue daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking bread from house to house. And it says they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having in favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as shall be saved. It will happen again. Yeah. 
We're looking at Acts chapter 4, verse 24. Acts chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 24. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. That's the sanctification there. That's the unity there. That's the oneness there. They lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, and thou hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is the, all that is there. And then it says, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the hidden rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching out thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. When they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they speak the word of God with what? With boldness. Look at verse 32. And the multitude of them, many of them, thousands of them, the multitude of them that believed were, tell me, of one heart and what? And of one soul, neither said any of them that all of the things which they possessed was his own, but they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. It can happen again, it will happen again. Look at chapter 5, chapter 5. We're looking at chapter 5 and reading from verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 12. It says, And by the hand of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. That time has come back. Yeah. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And for the rest, uh, does no man join himself to them, but the people magnify them. And the believers, the believers, the believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and of women. Sanctification is the foundation of all that. Point number three now. In point number three, we have the potentials and the uniqueness of sanctified brethren. The potentials and the uniqueness of sanctified brethren. We're coming back to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 25. John chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 25. It says, O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. As we look at these potentials, what Jesus said, look at the whole thing now. Number one, intercession session for us believers look at verse 20 verse 20 neither pray i for these alone but for them which shall believe on me through their word the lord is praying for you tonight it's at the right hand of the Father. And he has you in mind. And he has your concern in mind. And he has your experience in mind. If you are not saved, he's praying for you now. Salvation will come. If you are not sanctified, sanctification will come in Jesus' name. Number one, intercession for us believers. Number two, influence on the world. Impact on the world. Look at chapter 17. John chapter 17, verse 21. He says that they all may be one as the Father at in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world tell me we believe that thou hast sent me you know through us as we are sanctified we are going to impact the world 
we're going to influence the world and many from the world they're going to come in Jesus name number three now look at verse 22 and the glory which thou givest me I have given them that they may be one even as we are one indwelt by his glory indwelt by his glory darkness will vanish away from you glory will come into you light will come unto you and as you look at Christ more and more you'll be changed from one glory to another glory in Jesus name indwelt by glory look at uh, the next verse we're looking at uh, verse 23 I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me that is where infused by the Godhead infused by the Godhead he dwells inside us he abides inside us he remains inside us and great power will be manifested even through your life in Jesus name Amen. look at number five in verse 24 verse 24 the far father I will that they also whom thou hast given me may be with me you'll be with the Lord Amen. where I am is go to heaven and it says in my father's house I many mansions if it wasn't so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for somebody there Amen. for who Amen. you'll be in heaven Amen. it's preparing a place for you and you pray to the father sanctify them so that they will see my glory and where I am they will be also I will be there that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, and for thou lost me before the foundation of the world. That's inheritance in heaven. Inheritance in heaven. You have an inheritance there. You will get there. I said you will get there. I know you are writing. You write with the hand. You answer with the mouth. I said you will get there. Uh, look at look at this we're looking at uh, verse 25 now inspired information and revelation the kind of revelation that these people had and only these people had and the world did not have a said oh, righteous father we're looking at verse 25 righteous father the world has not known thee but i have known thee and uh, it says and these have known that thou have sent me they had knowledge that other people did not have revelation that other people did not have they had information that other people did not have look at uh, verse 26 and verse 26 and i have declared unto them thy name and will declare thy name and will declare it and then it says that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and i in them identical love for sanctified selfless sin you see the same love that the father has for the son that he has for the Lord Jesus Christ the same love he had for the believers and that's what Jesus was praying love them in the same way show them the same love manifest the same love unto them I pray that this will be your experience in Jesus name the Lord is praying for us look at Romans chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 34 Romans chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 34 he made to intercession for us he said i pray for them that the same love you find in the son you'll find that also in the believers we're looking at romans chapter 8 and i'm reading from verse 34 romans chapter 8 and we're looking at verse 34 it says who is he that condemneth it is christ that died yea rather that is risen again who even is at the right hand of god who also maketh intercession for us Make it personal. Make it intercession for me. Make it personal. Is making it a session for us and he prays for us that will be sanctified he prays for us that will be holy and God the Father always answers the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord will answer the prayer over you in Jesus name in Hebrews chapter 7 I'm reading from verse 25 wherefore is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him seeing he ever leave it to make intercession for 
for us even right now it's at the right hand of the father and he's making intercession for you and then he says because of that intercession you become useful profitable instrumental in the hand of the lord in bringing souls into the kingdom we're looking at a john chapter 3 and i'm reading from verse 17. john chapter 3 verse 17 he says for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he is not here now you are his sons you are his feet you are his mouth you are his eyes and you are his ears you are the people to go around representing christ the bride of christ the body of christ everywhere and to preach the gospel and what christ would have been doing if christ were here right now that's what you are going to be doing and souls are going to get saved through you in jesus name Amen. acts chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 6 acts chapter 17 we're reading from verse 6 and it says and when they found them they drew jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city crying these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also looks like you're going to have that dynamic power yeah. that dynamic effectiveness and you'll be part of those that will go into all the world touching lives and turning them to the lord turning the world upside down in jesus name yeah. and he dwells us with glory sanctifies us purifies us and makes us holy and indwells us with glory we're looking at hebrews chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 10 hebrews chapter 2 and we're reading here from verse 10 it tells us in verse 10 for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory what's he bringing you to I said, what is he bringing you to? Bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And as you look on Christ and you're looking at Christ tonight, he'll turn you from glory to glory in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, how many of us now? But we all, with open face, beholding you know, as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord and now we're indwelt by the Lord by the Father by the Son and by the Holy Ghost he dwells within us it tells us in first John first John reading from chapter 4 first John reading from chapter 4 and reading from verse 12 it says no man has seen God at any time if we love one another God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us he'll dwell in you and you know Satan and God cannot be in the same place at the same time if God is there Satan is out demons are out evil powers are out principalities and powers are out look at verse 13 verse 13 hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us he in us he in us because he has given us of his spirit and then he says heaven is for you yeah. for me I said for me, for me, look at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13, we're reading here from verse 12. It says in verse 12, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, that he might purify the people, that he might make the people holy with his own blood suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing Israel for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come yeah. are you looking for that city yeah. I said are you looking for that city yeah. well be there yeah. in first Peter chapter 1 reading from verse 3 first Peter chapter 1 reading from verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy has uh, begotten us again uh, unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept are you part of this yeah. who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed 
in the last time in the last time he will reveal that in jesus name and then he says that those disciples had something they knew something that ordinary people the people on the street and people in their synagogues did not know he's giving us real revelation and information and impartation from heaven it tells us in matthew chapter 11 verse 27 matthew chapter 11 verse 27 all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the father neither knoweth any man the father save except the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him he'll reveal him to you today you'll never be the same again i'll never be the same again he gives us also identical love as we become selfless sanctified and we're able to lay everything you know, on the altar he grants us love like he loved the father in john chapter 15 john chapter 15 we're reading from verse 9 john chapter 15 verse 9 as the father has loved me so have i loved you continue ye in my love you'll continue chapter 14 verse 20 chapter 14 verse 20 at that day shall ye know that i am in the father and ye in me and i in you galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 i am crucified with christ it will happen nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me where is christ i said where is christ his savior if he lives in us he'll totally separate us from sin and save us from sin and cleanse us from sin and set us free from sin he's sanctifier if he lives inside us he sanctifies us he purifies us he makes us righteous and holy ready for heaven and he says i'm crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me and the life which i now live is this talking about you and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god tell me who loved me and gave himself for me who loved me and gave himself for me tonight it will be fulfilled more and more in jesus name tonight we have seen the pattern of unity tonight we have seen the picture of unity tonight we have seen the power of unity we have seen the purpose and the usefulness of the unity of sanctified brethren and the bride of christ and we have seen the potentials and the uniqueness of those as sanctified brethren and it's not for us to pray it in to make it happen so that the knowledge will not just be in our head it will not just be in our mind it will not just be on paper it will not just be in the bible it will be transferred into our hearts and as we tell the lord that everything i've heard today everything i've learned today everything i've read today in the word of god i want it inside my heart it is going to happen the lord is praying for you already and as we join your prayer to the prayer of the lord jesus christ if you need salvation he'll save you so if you need forgiveness he'll forgive you if you need restoration he will restore you. he loves you he doesn't want you to continue in that condition if you need sanctification that's his specialty he will purify your heart tonight in jesus name let's rise up let's rise up and really 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 pray unto the lord and tell the lord tonight oh lord here am i oh lord here am i let it be done in my heart let it be done in my heart he prayed and provided for your sanctification he prayed and provided for your purity of heart he wants to do it right there he wants to do it right there and he wants to bring the unity the unity unity with the father unity with the son and unity with the body of christ open your mouth and tell the lord when you have this a sanctification there'll be deeper humility when you have this sanctification there'll be deeper holiness when you have this sanctification there'll be deeper honesty transparency in your life a happier home a happier family there will be higher honor there will be heavenly mindedness and there will be heavenly hope tell the Lord, tell the Lord he wants to do it, he wants to do it you must be able to say that was the day when I was sanctified that was the time, the hour when I was sanctified, that was the study that brought me into sanctification into the holiness experience he wants to do it right there he wants to do it right there if you tell the Lord, he answers prayer he answers prayer, you lay everything 
upon the altar. You consecrate everything. You give everything unto him. You say, Lord, nothing reserved and no reservation. I lay everything on the altar. I want you to touch my heart, transform my heart, and I want you to sanctify my spirit. Do it, Lord. He will do it. He will do it. He delights in sanctifying his own people. He will do it for you. He'll do it for you. And then he'll bring the result in your life. There'll be unity. Unity with God. Unity with Christ. And unity with the word of God. Unity with the doctrine. There'll be unity with the people of God. You tell the Lord, tell the Lord, do it for me, Lord. Do it for me, Lord. And then all the disunity in your family, all the disunity in your community, all the disunity in your yard, you don't see eye to eye with that one, eye to eye with that one, and all big eye and little you, all the contempt and all the confrontation, everything will be wiped away, will be wiped away. The real sanctification experience, there will be no anger in your heart and there will be no bad attitude in your life. You will not be having conflict with other people as the Lord sanctifies you and purifies you. He will make you to come to the pattern, the pattern, the pattern of the Son or the Father, of the Son or the Father. You will be a pure bride of Christ, a beautiful bride of Christ. Christ, a holy bride of Christ, a washed bride of Christ. You'll be whiter than snow, whiter than snow in your heart, whiter than snow in your mind, whiter than snow in your disposition, whiter than snow in your thoughts, whiter than snow. He'll do it, he'll do it. Call upon him, call upon him because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Internal cleansing, internal purification. The Lord will do it. Let him do it, let him do it let him do it tell the Lord and believe the Lord believe the promises of God he has promised he said I'll cleanse them I'll wash them I'll sprinkle clean water upon them and they shall be clean and then he says I'll take the stony heart out of their flesh and I'll give them a heart of flesh I'll give them a heart of flesh he can do it he can do it follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord follow peace with all men You'll be able to do that. Sanctification assures us there will be the peace of God and the God of peace reigning in your heart. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, he'll give you the picture. And you begin to practice it at home. Husband and wife, unity. Parents and children, unity. Members and pastors in the church, unity. In the community, believers like you, you'll be united with them. And there will be no conflict. Uh, believers like you, you'll be united with them. There'll be no contradiction. Believers like you, you'll be united with them. There'll be no contention. There'll be no corruption. And there'll be no conspiracy. There'll be no contempt. There'll be no carnality. And there'll be no contamination. You tell the Lord, tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I today. Here am I today. Do it in my life. Do it in my heart. Do it in my soul. Do it in my spirit. And in the inner man, make the inner man pure. Make the inner man holy. Make the inner man whiter than snow. Let him do it. Let him do it. And then there will be consecration. Consecration. There will be nothing you are holding back from the Lord. There will be consecration. You lay everything on the altar. There will be compassion. There will be compassion. There will be sympathy with those who are suffering. There will be sympathy with those uh, who are going through hard times. When there is sanctification, you will not be thinking of your own selfish, of your own self alone. There will be no self Selfishness, you'll be thinking of other people. There will be cooperation, cooperation, because uh, you see, a uh, sanctification will take away, or knock out, or wash away all the contradicting things uh, between you and other people. There'll be cooperation, there'll be conciliation, there'll be conciliation, reconciliation too. When there's real sanctification, you have love towards everything, everyone, and you have sympathy for everyone, uh, and you have a kind of a cooperation a green spirit with everyone. There'll be condescension. Condescension. You come from that ivory tower, you humble yourself, you, you belittle yourself, and you come low and you become meek when there's sanctification. And there is a compliance, there is a clear conscience, there is a cleansed conscience, and there's a concerned conscience. You're concerned for other people. There'll be no corruption. 
there'll be no conspiracy, there'll be no contempt, there'll be no contention, there'll be no contradiction, there'll be no conflict, there'll be no confrontation when there's sanctification. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the holy in heart, blessed are the sanctified in heart, for they shall see God. You have clean hands and then you have a pure heart. Let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. He can do it for you tonight. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be sanctified. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be pardoned. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be purified. Let him do it. Let him do it. And then he'll empower you, energize you to go forth and win the world, your own world, and the people around you unto the Lord. Let him do it. He can do it. He will do it. He will do it. He cannot fail. He answers prayer. The Lord is praying for you, making it a session for every believer. The Lord is praying for you, making it a session for every believer. And it's going to make you have impact on your world, influence on your world. Your world will carry weight. Your word will carry anointing. Your word will influence other people. Your word will bring them to conviction and to conversion. Your word will make them get on their knees and seek the face of the Lord. And he wants to put more glory, greater glory in your life. More glory, greater glory in your life. More glory, more glory. As we look at him, as we look to him, and he lifts us up, and we move from one glory to another glory. One glory to another glory. And and then the head, the Godhead would live inside you, the Father inside you, the Son inside you, the Holy Ghost inside you. He'll quicken you in your spirit, quicken you in your soul, quicken you in your body because He lives and because He abides in you. Tell the Lord. Tonight is the night of answered prayer. Tonight is the night of answered prayer. Let Him do it. Let him do it. He's ready to do it. He will infuse you with the Godhead. He will prepare a place for you in heaven. An inheritance in heaven. An inheritance in heaven. An inheritance in heaven. That's what he'll give. He'll give you more revelation about Christ. As Savior. As Redeemer. As a substitute. He'll show you it's died for you on the cross of Calvary. Your substitute, your sanctifier. He revealed the depths of the love of God for Christ unto you. Because he does that in your life now. Does that in your life now. Believe. Stand on the promises. Those promises can never fail. Accept those promises. Believe those promises. The promise of cleansing. The promise of sanctification. The promise of holiness without which no man shall say the Lord. The promise of writing his word in your very heart. So the grace, the strength, the enablement to carry out Everything he has revealed, it will happen in your heart. He answers prayer. Crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live, life of holiness, the life I now live, life of sanctification. The life I now live, life of peace. The life I now live, life of love. I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He loves you. Gave himself for you. That you might be saved. That you might be sanctified. Purified. Made holy. Believe the Lord. 
shall be unto you according to your faith. Remember this day, the day of it, the manifestation of his love in your heart. The day of the demonstration of his Calvary love in your heart. Cleansing, purging, purifying, sanctifying, and bearing witness in your heart that it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing people of God said, Amen. You have prayed, haven't you? Yes. The Lord has answered. Amen. I said, The Lord has answered. Amen. You see the demonstration in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you, Lord, for your people, faithful people people who hack into your word and people who have received your word i pray lord every promise that you have given us and the intercession of jesus will be effective effectual in every life tonight in jesus name Amen. those who have confessed their sins to you lord i pray forgive them fully freely permanently in jesus name Amen. Take guilt away, take condemnation away, and take all the doubt away from their hearts in Jesus' name. Give them assurance of salvation, freedom from sin, and the power to go and live in newness of life in Jesus' name. Make them as white as snow. I pray for those who have prayed for sanctification, purity of heart. I pray, Lord, you make them whiter than snow in Jesus' name. I pray the double cleansing you'll do for them, the sanctification you'll give to them, and the purifying with the blood of Jesus, effect it in their lives in Jesus' name. Abide inside them and give them a higher power, a higher understanding, a higher revelation, a holier, deeper experience in Jesus' name. In their home, holiness. In their heart, holiness. In their behavior, holiness. In their character, holiness. In their interactions, holiness. In the place of work, holiness. Anywhere they go, the holiness of Christ will beam out through them in Jesus' name. Confirm the word of sanctification in the believers in Jesus' name. And help us to see the fruit in our family. See the fruit in our evangelism. See the fruit in our local churches. And see the fruit of unity all over the church in Jesus' name. That same pattern of unity between the Father and the Son give unto your church. And that picture of real unity in all the believers in fellowship give it to your church. And Lord, we pray the power to remain productive and persuasive and uh, we have uh, this uh, progress in unity and usefulness. Confirm it in every life, Lord. I pray that the blessings you have given today to every one of your children, young and old, workers and leaders and members and invitees, I pray pray that this blessing will be permanent upon everyone. As your people go back home, we're going back with the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you and God bless you.